Hello, everyone. I'm joined here uh, with uh, Winston Wu. Uh, Winston, uh, it's, it's nice having you on the show. So what we're going to be focusing on most of the show is on American culture and how it kind of comparing American culture to other cultures throughout the world and a lot of the problems in American culture. I guess you can start start off by uh, telling us about yourself. Your parents were immigrants from Taiwan, and you grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. Could you please tell us about your your story growing up and about your, uh, kind of a brief bi- biography? Okay, yeah. Well, I was born in Taiwan, and then I um, came to the States when I was three, and um, and I mostly grew up in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, but I'd say it's ever since I was um, in elementary school, I, I mean, I mean, I've never had a, a very, very authentic life. I, I mean, I was I was bullied and teased, and and, and you know, and, and I, I thought the world was, was was an evil place, and and I didn't know how to make sense out of that. So so you know, then I turned to religion and stuff, and. Um, and, and later, I mean, eventually, I, I realized that that you know we have a very inauthentic culture and, and a high rate of mental illness, and um, there's just so much social dysfunction, you know, with, with the high divorce rate, with the breakdown of family values, and and um, so I, I, I've I've discovered, you know, that it's it's mostly the the. The culture that's the problem, not not the people that are suffering. I mean, I mean, it, there's a lot of factors, but 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 the society is just dysfunctional. I mean, we have the highest mental illness rate in, in the world, and that really speaks volumes. Um, and, and if if you go to other countries or if you travel a lot, you you find out that people don't have to see a therapist or a psychologist when they have have problems. They have people to talk to, and and, and um, the, basically the 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 key thing in in, the, um, in America is you you aren't really I mean, you, you you feel insecure by default, and you aren't really allowed to be yourself. So you're constantly running on this treadmill of trying to keep up this this pseudo confidence, this bravado, which which isn't even even authentic. And um, and so 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 I mean, no one really feels accepted for who they are. That that's why people wear such a fake mask, and and, a, and they act very superficial. Um, and and so so every everyone, even good looking people, are, are, are insecure deep down inside. And 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 there's also a narcissism epidemic. Where everyone, you know, I mean, a lot of I'm not everyone, but a high percentage of people are narcissistic, and, and they think they 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 deserve the best, and, and and they take every little insult. I mean, not insult, but they take every little thing personally, and, and they can they can twist a compliment into an insult. So so people have very fragile, insecure egos, and um, and and you just don't find this in, in in a lot of the rest of the world. You know, where where where, where things are. I mean, every every country has problems and corruption and good and bad things but but they have the same problems that that people have had for thousands of years whereas in america the the, the social dysfunction and the fam the breakdown of family values and the inauthentic lifestyle is a fairly recent phenomenon it's not natural at all um so yeah i i mean there's just there's just something inauthentic and and oh uh, also a very key telling thing is that if you're a very down to earth and sincere person in America, I mean, you 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 actually don't fit in with a lot of cliques and groups, and, and you're kind of the more authentic and, and down to earth you are, the more of a misfit you are, and I think that speaks speaks volumes about the the in 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 authentic in in authentic nature of of the culture and society that it's yeah, become. Yeah, that's you know? the thing about American culture. I mean, you, you wrote an extensive article about your experience in high school. I think a lot of people have really miserable experiences in high school. But in high school, you see the most extreme of that culture where everyone, it's very cliquish. And if you don't fit into one of those cliques, you're kind of on your own. But I think that's true of American culture. I think it's, wor- I think there's a diff- I think it's worse in places like California and New York. May be better. I think I don't know if there's a diff- difference in places like the Midwest, but it's definitely where I think it's worse in Cal- places like California, and New York. But it, it's something that's a kind of a, it's the culture of this whole country. Even I mean, I've spent uh, several months in England, and even there, I think people were more open. A good example is you would if you went. I noticed there were a lot of instances where I was maybe like 16 when I when I was there with my family. But you would just start up a conversation with a stranger if you went, let's say, went on a hike 
or went to a restaurant and I, w- I live in LA. That's very rare in LA where you would have, ha- have a conversation with a stranger and people are very, I mean, I think places like LA are the, are the worst, but I think this is something that part of American culture as a whole. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it is the worst on the West Coast and also in New York. But I, I think, I mean, from what a lot of people say, it, it's actually the worst on the West Coast USA. Because if you go inland, even if you just go to Nevada, you start to notice that people are more down to earth. And and you know, and the and the more inland you go, the more people are more down to earth. I mean, that comparatively speaking, you know, to 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 the West Coast, of course. I mean, plus people who live in a rural nature environment are, are more are going to be more down to earth, anyways. You know, but but a lot of the attention in Western culture comes from California. In New York, so the rest of the world sees us, you know, as being sees the U.S. as being California, you know, because you know the Hollywood and the media culture comes from there. Um, yeah, yeah, so I, much, I, so much of it is about just people. A lot of people are end up being miserable. They they devote so much of their lives to trying to see who is a who is a better car. And a lot of the times, these people end up being miserable. They're, they don't really enjoy life. Everything's about status. And sh- showing off uh, material materialism. Yeah, and and I read an article recently that someone sent that that said that I mean America is, I mean people people are are are, are you know have, have have good have still they still have basic morals and a conscience, but but they're they're kind of soulless in in, in that you know they they've com- been completely enslaved to their their work and their job, and and there's just not a lot of meaningful interaction between people, um, and and people don't even know their neighbors. I mean, I mean they're just they just smile politely to get along, but but there's not a con- there's, there's a huge lack of human connection, and um, and the thing is you're not allowed to talk about this because if you go out and and, and talk about it you know in in, in out in public. In, in America, or, or you know, whether it, it's at a party or a work environment, I, I mean, people think you're a freak, you know, or a loser to talk about this because 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 people always keep this facade and bravado and, and mask that everything is going great and, and and everything is wonderful and and every day is a great day and that they're always happy even when they're not. You have, there's this pressure to constantly maintain this illusion that everything is great even when it's not. So so it, it's a very inauthentic culture in a lot of ways and and I think that leads to a psychosis where 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 people have a split from reality and themselves and 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 I think subconsciously everyone knows this deep down you know but some people just don't realize it and some people can't put it into words and I get a lot of fan letters you know from people that visit my website happierabroad.com um, fan letters that that say, you know, I I, I didn't know any, anyone else thought this way. I thought it was just me, and I thought, you know, I was the problem, because our culture tells you to blame yourself and and not the culture, and and you know, but people that are more aware and real realize, you know, things like um. Like I, I would encourage people to Google the, the the these names, like Eric Fromm, for example, a Swiss psychologist. He actually said that most people are, are insane, and, and 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 insane people get along with other insane people, whereas the the authentic person usually becomes a misfit. So that's Eric Fromm said that, and also a few hundred years ago, there was a great German philosopher named Arthur Schopenhauer. Who was also very insightful and said a lot of true things. I mean, even though he was a pessimist, you know, I mean, uh, most of what he said was was very true. You know, that that society tends to be inauthentic in, in that that you know the the when you're trying to appeal to a large group of people, you you know, you kind of have to to say what they want to hear and and, and to be inauthentic and, and and that problem has reached you know the height. It's it's you know an all time high in America. So. Um. So it's definitely the, the 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 society and the culture, not not the individual. And, and authentic people tend to ha- have a hard time fitting in. Yeah, and, and everything's kind of fa- becoming kind of fake about our society. I mean, if you look at the, I mean, the food the food is all artificial. And if you go into a lot of city, a lot of the uh, newer cities or suburbs, everything just everything is really kind of fake and ugly. And there's just a lot of so many different aspects of our society. I mean, the as from the the way people interact with each other to the aesthetics to the the food that we're eating. 
Yeah, the, the, for some reason, I, I don't know what they put in the food, but but it, um, I mean, there, we all know there's this obesity problem in in America, and I, I don't think it's just you know a lack of exercise. I, I mean, it, there's got to be something in the food. I don't know what, but but some, you know, there's some kind of chemical that that because because a lot of people notice that you know like a lot of immigrants notice that when they come to America, for some reason, the food makes you fat or throws your body out of proportion, and it also makes you more angry. It, it, it flares your temper for some reason. I don't know why, but. Um, I mean, we don't know a lot of things that go on, like at the higher levels of government and and and, and the the higher corporations and and the what the what the elite do. I mean, it could be a conspiracy. It, it's you know to to you know in our food, you know, or a Monsanto or whatever. I mean, there could be a conspiracy. I mean, we just don't know because the the American public is not told a lot of things that that goes on, and and, and when you're not told, um, I, I, I like. Organic organic food should be accessible to everyone, but it's considered like a luxury item like that. Like rich people who go to Whole Foods can get organic food, but it's not really accessible to your average person. I mean a lot of a lot of working class people eat they eat it at like McDonald's for instance, because that's all they can afford. Uh good quality food is like almost like a luxury item. Yeah, and it's it's expensive. I mean I mean you you have to be well off to be Eating organic food from health stores every day, but that, that's that's one of the things. When I was in Europe, uh, I was told that you know most of the food there is is natural and organic. There, there's no there's no need for an organic health food store in Europe because 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 they don't put the kind of chemicals that that they do in America. And so if if you go to Europe, for instance, you'll see that most people, you know, they don't have that obesity problem there. Most people are really thin, you know, and and, and height weight proportionate and. Um, it's only when America exports McDonald's and fast food over there that people start becoming more and more and more um, overweight. But overall, I, I mean, they're a lot more thin and normal. And I, it's got to be something in the food, you know. As they say, you are what you eat. So, um, but with the globalization, that's all spreading to the rest of the world. Yeah, I, I mean, the Western. Culture, you know, exports, you know, its culture to the rest of the world, you know, and and, and you know, like McDonald's and the culture, and so, so I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, some countries are becoming a little more more like that, you know, but it's if you if you you know if you if you travel in, or internationally, you'll see that most countries are still not like that. I mean, even in Europe, I mean, I mean, I mean, you can have some some good things in Western culture without you know the bad things. Um, and like you said, people in England, you know, seem more open and down to earth, and, and you'll notice that in, 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 you know, pretty much all of Europe that people just have this more, are just more authentic. You know, they they don't give this fake smile. If you see someone smile at you, you know, it's usually a real smile. I mean, it's usually, uh, it's usually an authentic smile, not 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 a fake one. You also talk about European culture and Asian culture. I guess you can, we can start talking about Asian culture. You talk about their positive, positive and negative characteristics, but some of, I know some people have said that you're, you kind of, when you were growing up, you, you did feel a little bit out of place with uh, Asian American culture. You talked about how it's kind of has a strong emphasis on conformity. And you talked about like like you talked about when you were in high school you got bad grades and that was like a that's sort of like the worst thing that a uh, Asian student can do. Yeah, well, you know, I was always you know a free thinker. You know, I I didn't believe that. I mean, grades are are, are, are I mean a psychological thing. I mean, it's just a a letter on a piece of paper. If if you don't think it's important, then it's not. But the thing is, most people. Um, are, are like sheep, you know, or, or zombies. Every, almost everything, if you really think about it, almost everything you believe is because everyone else believes it or because society told you to believe it. You know, pe most people just, you know, don't think for themselves. They just, they just believe whatever everyone else does and they assume that if everyone believes something, then it must be true, you know, or if society says something, then it must be true. So they never, you know, critically think or analyze these things. And, and, and grades is an example. I mean, if, if I get an F, you know, on, on a test, I, I can choose to, to to take that personally or not. If if I don't think it's important, then it's not for me. It's just a letter on a piece of paper. So you have that choice to to not let it affect you. But most people don't realize that because they 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 care about what other people think, you know. And 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 I found that in order to be truly free, 
to have true freedom, it begins in the mind. And the first thing you got to do is not care what other people think. Just be true to yourself. Be true to your heart. Be true to your 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 life purpose, you know, and your your passion. And you know, once you don't care about what other people think, you're a lot actually a lot more free than you were before. Because because I mean, other people can't affect you, or, or, or and you don't have to live for, to please other people, you know, or to please your society or your peers, or to keep up an image to, to compete with other people. Because you know, I mean, you just don't care. You're just doing what's best for you and, and evaluating yourself by your own standards, and that's the ultimate freedom that one can have. And um, and yeah, you're right. I mean, I didn't fit into a, a, the Asian American culture because they were all about grades and trying to get into the highest universities, you know. And, and um, so I was kind of a misfit in both cultures, the American culture and the Asian culture. And I, but I've been, but I mean, I always saw myself as very sincere and authentic and down to earth. But I mean, that isn't enough because, like I said, you can be very sincere and you can be very friendly and outgoing. But but if you don't break into any cliques. And then you know you don't have any friends, so that that's really sad and and, and you know uh, telling that well, you, you, were, the most, you were yeah, in high ahead. school. You did visit Taiwan. Was there that culture of cliques there, or that's more of an American American thing? Yeah, Taiwan actually ha has cliques too. You know, it's like in America, and, and, and people don't. It, it's similar to America in that people don't socialize outside of their cliques, and that's true of Japan and Korea too, the, the first world Asian countries. Um, but the thing is, um, the thing is, if you don't belong to a clique, you, you're not, you know, as pers you're not really persecuted there. And and if if you have people that you're seeing every day at school and work, it's a lot easier to make friends too. And and I mean, you you just don't feel like you have to keep up a bravado of confidence or something, or keep up an image. I mean, it's it's still not as people are more introverted there and reserved, but it's it's not as you know fake or artificial. So so um, yeah, it is clickish, but but for in a different way for for different reasons. Um, so. Well, you also, I think, is it more like like in America, uh, if you look at high school, popularity is not necessarily based on who is the best student. I mean, that's kind of the – I think in Asian culture, there's a more of an emphasis on education. But in Amer I think um, – and I'd say in American culture, popularity was based on, extra, I would say, extroversion. Well, yeah, well, I think that's actually a myth because, like I said, you can, you can be very outgoing – and not have any friends if you don't break into any cliques. You, you kind of have to play the game and you know play the superficial games that that it takes to break into cliques. And some people are good at that because they're natural conformists. But I've never you know I've been I've always been kind of a, a contrarian. You know I don't go with the crowd. I think with myself for myself. So I've never been really good at breaking into cliques. You know and and you you kind of have to to be somewhat of a conformist to break into a clique. And and that's the problem with with me. And I, I've actually always vibed more. More with the, the European culture than with the Asian or the American culture, um, because because Europeans are kind of more they kind of more th they kind of have an intellectual life where they think for themselves. Um, so, for example, I mean, you could go to Italy or Greece or France, and you, you could find these these really intellectual guys that that also know how to have fun. I mean, they're not nerds or geeks or anything. They know how to have fun. You know, I mean, they're very charming to women and they're very handsome, but they're very artistic and intellectual at the same time. You know, whereas in in America, if you're like that, I mean, you're you're kind of a nerd or or a misfit. You know, and so I've always vibed with that because because my mentality was more. See, in, in Europe, people 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 judge their life by, by the variety of experiences they've had. They don't judge their life by, by their money or their career. You know, they don't see what they do for a living. Yeah, in some parts of identity. Europe, it's actually considered rude to ask someone, like, what they do for a living to, or to talk about how much money someone makes. It's considered rude in a lot of Europe. Yeah, it is, and um, people aren't obsessed with with their career. I mean, their identity is based on on you know who they are, their soul, their experiences, their variety. When they look at their their life, they think, you know, how, how many, how much variety, what what kind of experiences have I had? How much variety do I have in my experiences and my travels? That, that's why you see so many Europeans traveling, like as backpackers or, or something. Whereas you know, there's a lesser percentage of Americans. I think only like eight percent of Americans have passports. Last time I heard it, it might have grown since then. But um, Americans don't travel internationally as much as as, as Europeans do. And um, so yeah, I, I mean, I mean, they they 
they, they judge their life by, by the experiences they've had, whereas Americans judge it by, by material things in their career and their keeping up with their Joneses, you know, and I don't think that's an authentic way to live, you know, it, it's just, it's just so unnatural to me, you know. I, you know, I, I've never been able to fit into that, even when I've tried. I mean, it just was not me, you know. And I don't think humans were meant to be that way. It, it's just not unnatural to, to judge yourself, you know, by, by material things, because those things are illusions, anyways. I, I, I mean, what what makes people happy is is, I, and and this is a, a key point that that the media will never tell you is that the happiest people in the world. Are not people who have too little or too much, but people who have just enough. Those are those are the people that are most balanced and the most happy, and, and who have the most meaningful, you know, interaction. You know, because well, the media is ba- kind of based on consumerism. Like if you look at how Hollywood and the big corporations, they're making, I mean, they're making a massive profit off of consumerism, so they don't want they sort of they want to keep that going, and the the whole culture, commercialized culture. Uh, of consumerism. Yeah, the media is, is I mean, uh, the media is, is all about boosting the economy. I mean, w- one thing I don't like about the, the U.S. mainstream media is w- w- when people are starting to buy less useless junk, for example, they actually report that as bad news, uh, you know, as though, you know, people should buy, go out and buy useless junk that they don't need to try, try to, you know, and waste their money and, and, and fill their house with useless yeah, junk. Yeah, it's a, wa- it's a waste, a- it's a waste of money. I mean, aesthetically, it's, 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 I mean, in Europe, people value quality over quantity, and it's also, it's also bad for the environment. But it's like what George, George Bush said that right after 9 11, to, to do your patriotic duty and go out and like shop. Yeah, and that's just insane. I, I mean, they're obviously controlled by the corporate interests, you know, where, where they, you know, everything is about working and consuming rather than, than, than quality of life. Um, I, I mean, there, there's a saying in Europe, Europeans um, work to live, whereas Americans live to work. And and, and there's another saying by, by someone that I quoted in my ebook where, where he says, America is a country that's built for doing business, not living life. So it's hard to to have a, a quality, you know, rich life in America because, because, you know, I mean, if your whole life is spent working, I mean, if you think about it, it's an oxymoron. I, I mean, what's the point of of ma- working to make a living if almost all of your your living or your life consists of working? It, it defeats the purpose. But but Americans are so brainwashed that they don't think, stop, and think about these things. Everyone just lives. I mean, people just live to make money, and and I think that the brainwashing and the mind control is actually stronger in America than it is in other countries because Americans see themselves as individuals, you know, with their own outspoken ideas and thoughts. And in in, a, in an individualist country, in order to control people, you have to, to use stronger mind control techniques. Whereas in Asia, you know, they don't need to, to turn up the mind control because. I mean, even though every government uses some form of mind control, in Asia they don't need that much mind control because people are naturally conformed, so they don't need need to to, to um, brainwash people as much, you know, as in America, you know, where they have to, to you know, use stronger techniques than than you know in, in a country where everyone thinks they're an individual. So that's that's something I've noticed. What do you think the origins of it are? I mean, there's I guess there's different ways to look at it. I know that some people come up. With conspira- the, the so-called conspiracy theories to explain stuff, and then some people say it's just a, tr- a trend that kind of evolved on its own. But how do you look? How do you w- see the origins of this? A lot, some of this, uh, these trends have been going on for a while, and some of them are fairly recent. But it does seem to get be getting worse and worse, all, almost like a cancer that's spreading. Yeah, well, I think it's both. I, I mean, there's the economic factor, and also, you know, there's there's an agenda for social engineering, and, and we don't really know what that agenda is. Um, but but I don't think everything. I mean, for for the elite class, they can't. I don't think everything is about money because they have all the money in the world, and they can print money out of thin air. Um, so I mean, I don't think they're concerned with making more money. I mean, that they obviously have some hidden agenda that we don't know. I mean, it, it might be like a, like every, like a lot of conspiracy people say, or like Alex Jones says, or David Icke says, you know, a new world order or a global government. I mean, it might be that, but there definitely is a lot of social engineering because because I mean I mean 
if you if you look at at, at American society, I mean, I mean, people are segregated more than they are in other countries, because you know it's like like they say it's the divide and conquer strategy. You have to divide people into little bubbles to make them weak, so that they don't they're not a threat to the elite. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean the. People, the biggest threat to the elite is people kind of work working together, and you know, obviously, and they just want to divide people into social different kind of uh, different, as you said, different bubbles to exactly divide and conquer. Yeah, and and and, and you know they prey on fear. I mean, I mean. You see, in every in every country, the only way a few people can control, you know, the many, a lot of people, is by by making convincing people to give up their power. See, if you don't give away your power, then no one can really control you. I mean, uh, like the con- I mean, control itself is an illusion. But it, it, I mean, it, as long as you don't organize a movement, you know, the government really doesn't care what you do. I mean, most of the time, it, even if you. Um, I mean, even if you break a few laws, I mean, I mean, they don't, they're not really gonna, gonna worry about it, you know, if you're just an individual, you know, it's when you organize a movement and, and draw attention to it that, that they start to care, you know. Otherwise, you know, they don't really care what you do, so, I mean, you and have to take... The, none of the political mm-hmm. movements are really, I think, the, in this country we have the liberals and the conservatives, and I think they're both God, the thing that, well, the thing I say about conservatives are always uh, the conservatives are always qu- quick to defend defend the sort of making a profit. They're all about making a profit, and that and that's kind of what they're about. But the thing, liberals are just liberals are just. I think so many of them are just so politically correct. You can't have a discussion with uh, with them without them freaking out about political correctness. So they're both. I mean, they're both. I think they're both kind of useless in those those two way regards. Yeah, I mean that that's very ironic. I mean, I mean it's it's actually very hypocritical because because I mean America has been taken over by political correctness, especially on the West Coast and and in New York. And, and um, if you have a country with free speech, I mean, how can you have free speech but but demand that everybody be politically correct, you know, and, and not say what's on their mind or not speak the truth? I mean, it's it, it, there's so much hypocrisy in America that it just doesn't make any sense. You know, to, to, to have such contradictory laws and expectations. Um, yeah, I mean, truth tr- truth is, is, is often a taboo now, and um, I, I'm, I'm actually more of a libertarian, you know, uh, than, than, than a conservative or a liberal. But, but, but I, I've noticed that conservatives, even though they can be more narrow minded, they're, they're at least more, they, they're usually more down to earth than, than liberals are. And, and I, I've had a lot of conservative friends who, who will, like, even though I disagree with them, they still keep me as friends. Whereas when, when, when I have liberal friends, if I don't agree with their views, they usually break off the friendship. You know, I mean, they're, they're a lot yeah, more insecure. Yeah, that's true. I, I agree completely. I mean, I have, I disagree with conservatives. But for the most part, conservatives aren't as bad as liberals when it comes to you have to be really careful what you say around them or they'll get offended. If you say the wrong thing, they get they get up they get upset, or you have or they yeah, they're a lot more insecure. Yeah, yeah. So so it's like like I mean, it's what's really. Uh, Ironic is, is, I mean, these liberals think they're they're progressive or something, but but how can you be progressive if if I can't even be honest around them? If they're they're it's, it's almost like they're they're Nazis against free speech. I mean, if you think about it, it's the liberals that that want all the political correctness. You know, I mean, they're they're less authentic and so insecure. And, and um, but yeah, if you have liberal friends, you, you'll find that that once you don't agree with them. Eh, They'll get offended and they'll they'll cut off the friendship with you. I mean, they just don't like you if if you don't agree w- with them, you know. And 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 they're actually a lot more hateful than than the conservatives are. I mean, it's, it's like they have an axe to grind or something. If you've noticed, they're, they're less mentally balanced. I mean, I, I'm not you know e- either you know for or against either side, but those are just observations that I, that I've noticed. Um, hey, hold on a second, please. It's time for a break. Uh, please stay with us. Yeah, and um, yeah, and once I mean, I mean, there are so many taboos in America that that I don't see how how you know, I mean, what's the point of the, the the First Amendment or the free speech? I mean, most most of these laws, you know, are, are just on paper. They're not really really enforced. I mean, they're not 
really lived, you know. One so, thing I so, have to say is most people, when they think of uh, – they associate freedom as freedom from government oppression, but in a lot of cases, uh, society and culture can be just – can be almost equally oppressive as a government could be. Yeah, the whole freedom thing doesn't make sense because I mean, I mean, I, I could talk a lot about this because I've read written a lot of articles on this. But I mean, it, I mean, you, most most countries are not you know fascist you know or, or I, I mean, there's there's this myth in America that that it's the freest country in the world, but 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 there's really nothing to support that because. In most countries, I mean, in, in pretty much any country, as long as you obey the laws, the government doesn't care what you do. Um, so, you know, as long as you pay the, as long as you pay your your bills and, and obey the laws, that you, you're you're pretty much free to do whatever you want, and that's true anywhere. So, so, you know, in America and in other countries, I, I mean, you can do the same thing in Australia or Europe too. I mean, so so there's no evidence for this this myth myth, you know, that that. That, that America is the freest country in the world or because when people talk about freedom in America they act like like they they sort of insinuate that that other countries don't have the freedoms that that we have and, yeah, and there's, yeah, there's it's nothing absurd. to support I mean, that we have the large in sheer numbers and percentage we have the most people in prisons in the entire world I and mean, that's not that's not a free country yeah and, and also if you think about it I mean if you look at it America ha actually has more laws than 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 other countries do, and 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 they enforce them too more more tightly than other countries do. So so if you have more laws and more regulations, then you, obviously you have less freedom, you know, as a business and, and as a person than you do in other countries. So in that sense, America actually has less freedoms than other countries. I mean, there there is like political and religious freedom, yeah, in some ways, but. To me, freedom is being waking up and doing what you want every day. And most people, you know, go to a job that they don't like every day, and so so they're completely controlled and enslaved by by their job and and you know and by the economic system. So so in that sense, there there's no true freedom, you know, unless you're, you're self-employed or, or 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 you know or, or you have more free time, you know, or you're. The able other to thing time. with uh, political correctness is, I mean, a lot of people. If they're outspoken about something that's politically incorrect, they have to worry about losing their job. I mean, a lot of these big corporations will fire people for having politically incorrect views. Oh, definitely. I, I mean, w when you're employed, I mean, you have to watch what you say. You can't even say what you want. So, so I mean, there's there's not even any free speech, you know. So, a lot of things you believe in are, are myths, you know. And, and you know, I, I I would even say the whole democracy thing is a myth too, because a, a, a democracy technically means the rule by, a rule by the majority. But what country on earth? You know, is ruled by the majority. Definitely not the U.S. I mean, the, the 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 people of the United States have have no control over policy. I mean, if 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 there was a, a majority rule in the U.S., then there would there would be no wars, there would be no taxes, and the government would leave everyone alone. But that's not true, you know. So so obviously, if the majority of the American people don't control the U.S. or control the U.S. government, then technically it's not a democracy. So that actually is another myth. Uh, technically, it's a total myth, and the Founding Fathers founded America as a republic. And, and you know, just yeah, like the they, Roman they Empire emphasize was a, republic. a republic, not a democracy, but we're not even a democracy. I mean, well, yeah, we're, we're an oligarchy republic. now. We're an oligarchy now, which is ruled by, by you know, ruled by the elite, or ruled by the rich, or corporatocracy, well, ruled by by the corporate elite. So there's there's only two stable forms of government in the world. One is a republic, and one is an oligarchy. A republic is ruled by law, and an oligarchy is ruled by the elite. And and those are the only two stable forms of government. And obviously, America has become a rule by the elite. So technically, it's an oligarchy now, not 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 a republic anymore. And you know, and it's been for a long time. So, but a democracy, I mean, it never was. So, I don't know who started that myth. I mean, I, I think it, the whole voting process is just an illusion to give people a sense of power. And amazingly, people still believe in it, even though though it, it's been discredited. I mean, it's been disproven long time ago that that you know, voting does not change policy. It doesn't affect anything. I mean, the government still does what it wants. I mean, I mean, regardless of what you vote for, I mean, the policy doesn't change. But People are still gullible enough to fall for it, and that's really and sad. You, 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 would you say you felt freer in other parts of the world? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have to. I, I felt like, like you know, people were easier to meet, more sociable, more down to earth, and, and um, 
you know, and I didn't have to be something that I was not. And um, and I actually, you know, meet a lot more people, make a lot more friends, especially when you're traveling. You know, um, people are just more inclusive. Um, not not in every country, of course, but but definitely in some places. Which like countries Russia. would you would you say are more in- inclusive, and which ones are not so inclusive? I would say um, uh, most of Europe is, um, is, except maybe Scandinavia, and um, especially Eastern Europe is more inclusive. And Russia, Ukraine, Latin America, and um, and I'd say most of Asia is like that too. You know, except for the the first world countries like like Japan, Korea, Taiwan. It does seem like like the more economically prosperous a country is, the less social people are. You know the I mean, it's a sad truth, but but poor people are, are more compassionate and kind because they're more inter, inter, interdependent with each other. You know, poor people are, are more more friendly and open with strangers than 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 middle class and above are. They're more cliquish, and you know, and that that's a universal thing that I've noticed. That that you know that the more money you have, the the less social you are. You know, and, unless you're you're a really naturally outgoing guy like me. Like like, no matter how much money I have, I, I'm still very open and outgoing because because I'm very you know. I mean, I, I, I'm friendly and, and authentic. You know, it doesn't make me snobby or, or antisocial. You know, so it depends. You know, but but yeah, it's definitely large regions: South America, Africa, Russia, Ukraine, China, um, most of Europe. I'd say most of the world is very, very um, authentic and, and, and easy to, to make friends. I mean, I mean, it just flows a lot more naturally. Um, and I'd actually say that. I mean, you know how how in American movies everyone looks very friendly and expressive and outgoing and easy to meet. I mean, that's not the way America is in real life, but but in Europe it actually is that way, as you see in American movies a lot more than. than I don't get. Well, a lot of people like to talk about how European Americans always like to complain uh, Europeans are snooty. Well, some Europeans are culture snobs, like like in France, for instance. They're 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 snobby about their culture, um, but but once you 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 get used to that and, and and you learn how to get on their good side, and and I mean then they start to open up and warm up. You know, I mean it is true that that they're culture snobs. You know, but but the thing is. The problem in America is a lot of people, you know, are are just isolated, and, and there's a lot of people that just hate other people in general. They just dislike people. A lot of people can only tolerate other people for only a short period of time. You know, that that's one reason why people prefer. A lot of people prefer to be alone in America. Is there's just this hatred of other people. I don't know why, but 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 you won't find that in in Europe where where people naturally just hate other people in general. So we, I mean. I mean, a lot of countries do do have snobbiness, but it's a different kind of snobbiness. It's more like a national nationalism kind of snobbiness. But, but well, I think but, that's. I mean, I think that's uh, a good thing that they want to they want to preserve their cult culture. And I mean, European culture is a lot more. It is more authentic because it's been around. It's evolved over a thousand, a uh, very long time, like thousands of years or hundreds of thousands or to thousands of years. The thing about Amer- American culture is relatively new. And we do have some, re- like, re- some areas have strong regional cultures, but a lot of American culture is just kind of this kind of consumeris- consumerism, and that's kind of what we're spreading. Or we're kind of, sp- as I said, we're spreading that to the rest of the world. So, I, so people in, in, let's say, France, they do a lot of them. They do resent that when they see like McDonald's opening up there. And their their culture, but it is on the other hand, there is a lot of from what I've heard. They, they Europe, when I mean, Europe is far from perfect, they do have all these uh, speech laws there. Yeah, well, I mean, I would take everything the media says with a grain of salt because the media is going to portray everything in the most negative and stressful way possible. That's why I don't even watch the news. I mean, but but if you go there as a traveler or as a visitor. And spend some time in different parts of Europe. I mean, you definitely experience a more authentic, you know, people. You know, and especially for me, because I mean, I, I am. I would say that I am more like them than than I am a typical American, because because I, I don't like to, you know, do superficial greetings or act fake or have this, you know, fake optimism, you know, that that a lot of Americans do. 
you know, and, and, and plus a lot of Europeans. One thing I've noticed is that young young people in Europe can have deep conversations and deep, meaningful conversations, whereas in America, usually the older crowd, like the 40-year-old and above crowd, you know, tends to, to be more down to earth and, and into deep conversations, you know, whereas, you know, if you look at teenagers in America or the young crowd, you know, I mean, most of them are, are, are pretty much airheadish and, and, and not into deep conversations. It's like being dumb, more dumb is being cool, you know. There's, there's this dumb is cool, you know, mentality in America among the young groups. But, but in Europe, I mean, the young people are more down to earth and, and they, they speak more languages and, and they have a more broader knowledge of topics to talk about. I mean, I mean, the quality of the conversations are just much, much higher. I mean, people are more curious about the rest of the world. So you notice a difference. I mean, I, I've met, you know, girls in Europe in, 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 who are 20 years old and they're very beautiful and, and they could pass for models and, and, and and, and yet they're very down to earth and authentic, you know, and, and they're not full of themselves, and, and they 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 um they're just uh, they just have a they're just more authentic, you know, and and, and have a, they have a, an intellectual life, not not just an external life. They have a, I mean, they're just. I mean, they like to have fun too, of course, but but they're they're also into to learning things and be enriching themselves culturally and mentally too. What is what is it that uh, Steve uh, Steve Hoka, who he's done some? I think he had a used to have a radio show. I think it was, on YouTube he said something that the issue of I think he said the issue of male loneliness is the most taboo issue in our society. He says even more so than anti-Semitism. Yeah, it, it seems to be because I mean I mean I mean I mean if if you look at YouTube, I mean they they actually remove. Um, um, videos about male loneliness or the dating problems in America, and and that gets talked about less than 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 than, than even anti-Semitism. I, I mean, I mean, if you're a racist, yeah, I mean, it, it is a taboo subject, but I, I mean, I, I mean, it, but if you talk about the the problems with the dating scene, it just you makes think you look, it's look even like more, a loser. You think, in some ways, it is because. Well, it is anything to do with race. Race is definitely, or anti-Semitism, are very t extremely taboo topics. But I think you're right. People don't want to talk about that issue because people say, "Oh, you're a, you're a loser." So that 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 that's what makes it the social conditioning, even not necessarily the political correctness, makes that a very taboo subject. Yeah, and plus, you know, the the the, the you know the feminism in the U.S. makes make makes it. I mean, it, almost illegal to say anything bad about about the dating scene in the U.S. I, I mean, or, or or to you know, or to talk about men's problems because all the focus they want all the focus to be on on, on women and children. I mean, I mean, it's like like that's all that matters. Men men are men are expendable in the U.S. You know, men don't have 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 you know the rights that that women and children do. So, and that's really sad because men work the hardest to to, to provide you know for everything. And you know, I mean, they they invent things, they build things, but but they're treated, you know, as the as second class citizens in America. America is technically basically has become a matriarchy for sure. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's almost politically correct to be a man. I mean, if you're a single heterosexual male, I mean, you, you're pretty much considered, you know, a, a a dangerous creep unless you prove otherwise. Um, but yeah, I mean, and also. It's taboo to, to talk about the d dating problems in general in America because you, you have to. I mean, I mean, I mean, it makes you look like a loser. Plus, most people are trying to, to you know look cool and confident like a winner. But if if you blame society for for some loneliness epidemic in America, then then you're, you're going the opposite way. You're, you're not trying to prove yourself to be cool in America or, or improve your image. It actually just damages your image. So so it, it it's like a. It's like a self, def you know, self, you know, self-harming thing, you know that, that. And so most people don't have the guts to talk about it, you know. But it's true. There's a huge percentage of guys that, you know, are lonely. They they have no romance, no love in their life, and they have no choices. They they can't even get a girl to to, to have coffee with them because women. I mean, I mean, the women there are so picky, you know, and 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 and. and 
they all want the top 10 percent of them of the men and, and so 90 90 you know a large percentage of the men 80 or 90 percent you know um have to settle and, and still a larger a large percentage have no choices too i mean there's there's guys that go for years with no dates or girlfriends at all and keep and in mind they, a lot of these guys they're not necessarily guys you would think are losers they're just these are just normal men yeah, some of them have good jobs, and some of them are decent looking, you know. And yet, they they still can't find a date because because there's so many. I mean, the, with the narcissism in America, everyone thinks they deserve someone perfect, perfect, you know, with the best. Actually, not not so much the men. Men just want a girl who's who's feminine and down to earth and and sincere, you know. But but you know, a lot of women want the whole package. They want height, status, looks, money, uh, great personality. They want everything. The whole package of everything, you know, and and they're just, and most men don't fit those qualities. So so, a lot of women in America reject like ninety nine percent of men, you know, even of, of everyone that likes them. So so there are just so many lonely men, and, and they're afraid to talk about it. So so what they do is is they deny it and, and focus on their work and their career, you know. So there's a lot of men suffering in silent misery out there, and I get letters and emails from them all the time that they never knew that that other people were feeling the same way, and that 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 they didn't know that the problem was them too. They thought the pro that the problem was them because because you're taught in American culture that that if you have you know, if you're lonely or, or, or any problem you have, you got to blame yourself and improve yourself because, because, you know, it, it, it's it, they insinuate that society is normal and healthy, and 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 that 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 if there's a problem, then it's the individual, not the society, and, and that's just not true, you know, because because I, I always say if the problem is me, then how come in other countries I don't have the same problem? You know, that kind of you know debunks that that myth that that the problem is always with, it must be with me. Because if it was with me, then it would be, be be the same everywhere, and it's not. You know, I notice a huge difference in, in in cultures, and plus plus it's it's also taboo to to you know to compare cultures or to compare groups of people, you know, because then you get accused of, of generalizing, you know. But you see, I'm not really generalizing. I'm just defining very strong patterns that I that I see, you know. Like for example, if you see eight in 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 a, in a in a field with ten boxes, if you see eight X's and two O's, then then you know then then I see a pattern of X's. You know, I mean everything. I mean when when you compare and generalize, it is tricky because because on the one hand, it, it's not true that that I mean it's not. It's true that 100% of people are one way or another. You know, you can't you can't overgeneralize. Yes. But on the other hand, you can't you can't say that everyone is the same either in in the world either because there's yeah, not, it's there's, considered there's, ra like you're called a racist if you say there's differences between people. Well, yeah, I'd like ahead. to thank you for being on. Yeah, let's, thank you for having me, and, and I'd recommend everyone visit my website at happierabroad.com, H-A-P-P-I-E-R-A-B-R-O-A-D.com, and you'll find a lot of groundbreaking information and taboo truths that you can't find anywhere else, and we have a great community, a forum of advisors that give a lot of advice on, on how to find happiness you know, overseas or whatever you want to do, just a lot of intellectual topics and posters you know, that are very truthful, completely free thinkers, you know, happieraboard.com. That's, that's all we have for tonight, so take care, and we're back with you next time.